Welcome to Electron Line, a really good example for determining the kinetic energy, both rotational and translational kinetic energy, is this example right here. And we're going to do this in three parts. There's a lot of good parts of this problem. We're going to have a solid ball with a mass of 2 kilograms roll up a hill, a hill of 10 meters. We're going to determine the energy down at the bottom of the hill and the energy at the top of the hill. In part two, we're going to determine the velocity at the top of the hill and then the ball is going to continue off the cliff here and land at the bottom. And maybe I should put a dotted line there. So that's where the ball is going to end up. And then we're going to determine the energy, the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill and compare it to the initial energy it had over here. All right, starting out with part one, we're going to determine the energy at the bottom of the hill and the energy at the top of the hill. So we can say that the energy initial at the bottom of the hill equals the energy final at the top of the hill. At the bottom it only has kinetic energy but both translational and rotational kinetic energy. So kinetic energy translational plus the kinetic energy rotational and that is initial kinetic energy and that equals the kinetic energy translational final at the top of the hill plus the kinetic energy Let's see, translational, that would be rotational, final at the top of the hill, plus the energy gained by gaining height, which is the potential energy, MGH. Plugging in what these are, we have one-half MV initial squared plus one-half, and this would be I omega squared. So instead of using MV, we use I omega, and that would be initial omega this is equal to one-half mv final squared plus one-half i omega final squared plus the potential energy mgh. Now we're going to substitute for i and omega what i and omega are equal to. Now i for a solid ball, let's see here we have one-half mv initial squared plus one-half, the i will be two-fifths the mass m times the radius of the ball squared and for omega initial remember the relationship that v is equal to r times omega thus omega is equal to v over r omega squared will then become v initial squared over r squared and right away you can see that this r squared will cancel out with that r squared that equals the kinetic energy translational final one half mv final squared plus the one-half i, well again that's two-fifths m r squared times v omega final, which is v final squared over r squared. Again, the r's cancel, and then we still have the plus m g h. All right, simplifying things a little bit more, we can now write this as one-half m v initial squared plus the twos cancel out, one-fifth mv initial squared equals one-half mv final squared plus one-fifth mv final squared plus mgh. And now let's plug in what these energies are. So we'll calculate each of the energies, starting out with the first one. One-half mv initial squared is equal to one half times the mass. The mass is two kilograms and the velocity is 20 meters. We have to square that. So the twos cancel out, 20 squared would be 400. So the energy it has due to translational motion is 400 joules. And let's use a different color for that. So we have a total of 400 joules of kinetic energy, the translational type. How much energy does it have? For the rotational kinetic energy, that would be one-fifth mv initial squared, which is one-fifth times two times 20 squared. That would be 400, 800 divided by five. That would be 160 joules. So 160 joules of rotational energy combined the initial kinetic energy of the rotating ball would be, or the moving ball, because it's both rotating and moving, 560 joules of initial energy. Next, we're going to find out how much final potential energy it has, MGH. 
mg times h. The m, it's a two kilogram ball. G is 9.8 meters per second square and h is 10 meters. That would be 19.6, uh, 196 joules. All right, so the amount of potential energy it has is 196 joules. Now, without knowing the final velocity, and we'll go ahead and calculate that in the next uh, part, part two, we can at least calculate the total kinetic energy it must have both rotational and translational kinetic energy combined. Because all we have to do is take the initial energy here at the bottom of the hill, subtract the potential energy, that's energy lost due to the height gained, and then this would then be the remaining kinetic energy. Subtracting 196 away from 560, what we can do here is, okay, minus 200, that's 360 plus 4, 364 joules of energy, both translational and rotational kinetic energy combined. Now what we could do is if we combine these two together, let's do that here, we can say that if we have one half, the kinetic energy final is equal to one half mv final squared plus one fifth mv final squared. When we combine those, common denominator being 10, that's 5 tenths plus 2 tenths, or 7 tenths mv final squared. So this here equals 364 joules. This portion of it belongs to the translational kinetic energy and this much belongs to the rotational kinetic energy. All right, so in other words, we can say that this is basically 5 tenths mv final squared plus 2 tenths mv final squared and that is equal to 7 tenths mv final squared which is equal to 364 joules. Now we can go ahead and proportionally calculate what portion of that belongs to the translational kinetic energy and what portion belongs to the rotational kinetic energy. So now we need a calculator. 364 joules is 7 tenths. I want to know what 2 tenths of it, so this would be 2 sevenths of the 364 joules. So 364 times 2 divided by 7 equals, that's 104 joules belongs to the rotational kinetic energy and 5 tenths of the 7 tenths belongs to the translational kinetic energy. So 5 tenths of 7 tenths is 364, so I take 364 divided by 7 times 5 and I get 260 joules belongs to the translational kinetic energy. So finally we can complete this now on the final energy, 260 joules of it belongs to the translational kinetic energy and a hundred and four joules of it is due to the rotational kinetic energy. So here's a really good example to see how the energy is divided between both translational and rotational kinetic energy here and here it's a combination of translational, rotational and potential energy. So there's part one of this problem. On part two we'll actually try to calculate what the velocity must be at the top of the incline. So stay tuned for part two.